Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. This is part two. Part two uh, to trust. Trust not your adversaries, but trust the Holy Ghost. Trust the Holy Ghost. Trust not your adversaries, but trust the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost speaketh, right? The Spirit maketh in this in the session. The Holy Ghost will speak, and then it will, will speak great things uh, of power, you know. But you got to tarry for the Holy Ghost. You have to have the Holy Ghost. Anyway, let's get into it, because uh, this is part two. This is part two. Part two. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to go to First Peter. Uh, chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, King James, and it reads, the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Hamashiach, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. So here we have uh, Peter. You know, he's an elder. He's obviously seen the sufferings of Christ, of Hamashiach. Uh, you know, at first he denied uh, Christ, you know, uh, three times. You know what I mean? And, and then, um, you know, you know the, rooster, the rooster did its thing three times and things like that. But later on, when the Messiah came and visited him, he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. And he asked him three times, said, feed my sheep, feed my lamb, feed my sheep, and things of that nature. In other words, feed the flock. And then, you know, Peter became commissioned. You know, and when Peter was killed, the studies show that he, he said, he, he said, I'm not worthy to be crucified like, like, uh, like Christ. So Peter was crucified upside down. You know, uh, he turned his whole life over. Of course, you know, it, it meant that, the apostles that sometimes would have their little, you know, who are you going to go to? Because Peter sometimes would partake, then he would back out of it, you know, not out of the gospel, but out of certain um, uh, different laws and stuff like that as far as eating and not eating and all like that. But, um, and then they went on, they became commissioned, which was the will of the Most High, because the Apostle Paul wound up going to the Gentiles, which were basically uh, the Hebrews that were scattered, that were no longer in Jerusalem, but the four corners that was in the other um, different parts of the world. But anyway, let's 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 continue. And uh, it says, "The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ." See, he's, he witnessed it, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Because no flesh is going to glory in the Most High's presence, but there's a glory, an exceeding glory that's coming. Hallelujah. So listen, feed the flock of Yah. See, so it says, "Feed the flock of Yahweh, which is among you." taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. So what this, this passage is saying, this, this verse is saying is, feed the flock, the same thing, the Messiah, the same message was told Peter. Peter's now telling others, feed the flock, the word of the Most High, not no false doctrines, not no uh, hearsay or heresies or any heretic type things, but truth, you know, feed the flock, feed the lineage, feed of uh, the nations, the tribes, feed them, you know, the truth, you know, even if you got to go all the way back, bring them all the way in, you know, just as they did the, uh, just as the evangelist did, uh, Philip did the man, he said, the, the man said it when he was reading the scriptures, he was saying, is he talking, is the, is the prophet talking about himself or someone else, and then they broke it down to him, you know what I mean, uh, that, because he was reading Isaiah, and then he said, is there any water that I may be baptized, and they baptized him, so, they fed him truth. And let's, let's break down what this verse is saying. Feed the flock of Yah, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. So don't, in other words, it's like somebody may say, I was called to be a, a, pre, a, a pastor. I was called to be a preacher. Or, you know, God called me to go to school. God called me. You know, some, sometimes people, they, they get out there and realize they wasn't called. Many are called, but few are chosen. And then they try to, you know, they try to like fit into the constraints of the pressure of dealing with Satan every day, you know, it's no joke, you know what I mean, dealing with demons every day, dealing with these demonic uh, spirits, dealing with people in false doctrines, 
people trying to just try you, uh, people trying to debate you, all the things that Christ was dealing with. That's knowing him, as the scriptures say, in the fellowship of his sufferings. So we got to suffer with him to reign with him, the scriptures also say. So it's, it's taking oversight there, not by constraint, because if you feel forced, you know what I mean, and, and it's not you, now you out there, and then you might fall into temptation and fall into sin. We all fall into temptation. Christ fell into temptation, but knew no sin. What the scriptures say, he was tempted on all sides, but knew no sin. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And he paid it all for us. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. He paid it all for us. He laid down his life for us. He never said a mumbling word, but he did it. He's the redeemer for Israel. You know, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did, what did King David said? If it had not been for Yahoo was on our side, let Israel now say, where would we be? Where would we be? Because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments, wound up out of the land, wound up in slavery all over the world. I mean, we're in every country you name. If you dig back to the archives, you'll see, you know, the original people, you know. So if he had not paid that price and the temple torn in two when he went into the holies of holies we you know that's why apostle paul said at one time he said if i just be of, of i'm a paraphrase if i just be of hope i'm most miserable of all men but we know what we're talking about you know if i'm just walking around with hope you know but a lot of these doctrines are just just rituals and when you go all the way back you'll see they all took part and in, in, in stole different things from the original hebrew you'll see it in every doctrine every doctrine you know but it was by design the enemy come in and do that because he knew the spirits gonna fall in the last days and people will become conscious or woke of what's going on but then when they do become woke somebody's in this somebody's in that the, the religion this doctrine um this denomination i'm in that denomination i'm in and, and what did paul say is christ divided you know is he divided you know but there's one lord one faith one baptism let's continue so you don't want to be where, where you, you got yourself out there by constraint, but willingly, the scripture says, and not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. You know, because you should be, the Bible says, be able to preach in season and out of season, not walking around with a bunch of three, five car, three by five cars talking about, I got a word, I got a word. Oh, God is doing something big. You know, it, it's walking around real religious, you know what I mean? And not of a ready mind or for money. You know, you hear me say it, say it a lot, because we, you see it, you know what I mean? If I could just get uh, 149 people to pay $14,900 or $1,490 or $149, put something in your hand, something in your pot, put it in the basket, uh, and in the next 149 days, uh, uh, you going to get your blessing. Favor, 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 favor. You know, see all this kind of stuff. And these other people that might say, hey, I really want to know about the scriptures. It's phony to me. Y'all about money. The pastor got a Cadillac. He's sleeping with the choir member. And that's what comes. That's why all this ridicule comes. Because the name Satan means deceiver and accuser of the brethren. So he's going up, trying to go to heaven and say, you going to bless him? He's, he's doing that. He's a... He's, He's in adultery. She's in adultery. Or this is this. Or this person's doing that. How you going? Now we all fall short of the glory of God, you know. And the wages of sin is death. But thank God, with sin abound, grace did much more, you know. But you can't. The Bible says there's sins, and then there's sins that lead unto death. You know. Let's continue. So not for filthy lucre, not for that money, but of a ready mind, you know. Don't you don't have to be chargeable to no man, you know what I mean? And so you, you just come and you bring the word. You know, you know you're going to be persecuted. Ye that live godly suffer persecution. I deal with it on the daily. On the daily. You know, because he said, you're sent out as sheep for the slaughter. You know, especially when you know the truth. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't trying to be this way or mad or discriminative or hateful towards nobody else. You're just speaking, you're reading right out of the scriptures. You know? But here comes Satan doing his thing. Especially months like this, October. 31 days of high witchcraft people are doing, you know? And I remember when I didn't know. You know, we little kids, trick or treat, smile or tea, give me something good. To Who are you going as? I'm going as Superman. I'm going as Batman. I'm going as Speed Racer. I'm going as whatever. The girl's going as Cinderella. Going, and now you, you fast forward to the, to the day. Over the years, people going as Ninja Turtles, going as this. Some people just straight going as demons and witches and all that stuff. If that's your thing, that's your thing. But when you look into the origin of all those things, of Sam Hine and all these different things like that, 
when you find out it's all going to go back to witchcraft and, uh, and high worship of Satan. You know, so I would hear churches say, well, we, we still want to do something for the kids. So we're going to dress them up as angels and all. Why not just not do it at all and honor the most high? Don't try to parallel the thing. Anyway, let's continue. Neither as we in First Peter chapter 5, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. So be an example. Don't try to be a lord over your, the flock that the, the most high blessed you with. You're treating them all mean and all harsh and, and controlling them and all that. You missed two Bible studies in a row. I'm going to have to put you in front of the church and rebuke you in front of the church congregation. You know, trying to, I've been through, I'm going to tell you, I know how holiness can be. Now I understand the good part. Yeah, we don't want you to fall. But I've seen when folk just like wow with it. You know what I mean? Rebuking. Anyway. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, we walk around telling people, chief, what's up, chief? Hey, chief, and all that. There's one chief, one shepherd, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one master, one father. He said, don't call no man father on earth. But we walk around, that's Father Joe. And that's this and all. You know what I mean? Things that we don't research and study that are going against scripture. Then we're wondering why all this stuff is happening. And when the chief shepherd, the chief apostle, the most high, the alpha, the omega, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end, the most high, the author and finisher of our faith, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Don't you want that crown? Don't you want to get there on the other side? Don't you want to sit next to Isaiah or Apostle Paul and these people and see the most high and touch his garment and, and really thank him in person? You know, so we got to go through. I don't want to go through some time. It's rough, but I go through because I was called and chosen. And I'll die for the scriptures. A lot of people ain't the last minute. That's why the Bible says it's going to be a great falling away. But here's your adversary running around trying to destroy you. A snake is a snake. Won't always be a snake. You know the story. The snake talking snake was with the man. The snake said, can you carry me down the road? The man said, but you a snake. You're going to bite me. Uh, and the snake said, I won't bite you. He said, you will. You a snake. No, take me to the end of the road. The man took the snake to the end of the road. And when he got to the end of the road, the snake rose up and bit him. He said, you bit me. You promised me you wouldn't. What did the snake say? <laughs> Dog, you know I was a snake. What would you expect? Now? And so it is. The same type of people you deal with. They try to come at you before and attack you before. They, it's still in them. Talking about, trust me, I won't do that again. Yeah, you will. You know, yeah, you will. No matter how friendly and nice and humble I be or a person be, you're going to see you dealing with snakes. What is Satan? A snake. A serpent. That old serpent, the Bible says. The devil. That old serpent. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For Satan, that whole serpent, the devil, has been cast down to make war with the saints. You've heard me say it before, it's a scripture in Revelation. Let's continue. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Ye younger, submit yourselves to the elder. A lot of young people they don't want to listen to the elder. Oh, you old, man. You old G now. You know, all right, uncle. All right, uncle. I hear you. But guess what? There's a group of young men that I run into they want to hear. And they don't want to hear me being religious. They just need that father figure. They need that uncle figure. They need that big brother figure. They need that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm there with the love, with the help, with the support, whatever I can do. Some of them don't want to hear. And I respect that because they're still in rebellion. They're still going through things, you know, and it, it hurts me. You know, I know when I was young, but in my generation, we was made to listen to the elders. Oh, yeah, when that light come on, you better have your behind in the house. And my mother so said, and everybody in my age group, they all was the same. Everybody mom was the same. You know why? Because your neighbor could spank you and beat you for being in the tree. And it's, it took a village back then. Now, you, you, it's not like that. Nobody wants to listen, but that's Bible. It's scripted, it's scripted. It's not scripted, it's prophecy. You see children will rise up against their parents. These are scriptures in the last days. You know, all scriptures about you know, brother against brother, sister, mother against daughter-in-law, father against son-in-law. Why? Because everybody ain't in the truth. And the Most High, he said, you think I come to bring peace? No, I come to bring a sword. I come to bring division. And that's what it is. He divides because he got to get Satan out of it. Somebody say amen. So young folks, sometimes it's all right. Some old people talking out of their mind. You know what I mean? But some of them love you. They might not get around like they used to, but they love, they see something in you. We used to be forced to stop at the end of the block and talk to the old man sitting on the steps or the old grandmother, especially in church, you know, because they have wisdom and you're neglecting wisdom. You're not going to be young forever. Then when you get old, you're going to be frustrated not knowing how to deal with getting older. 
not knowing how to deal with a young generation that's even more rebellious, you know. So that's not all young, because I got some talent, some young folk that are awesome, talented, gifted, my, I mean, mind-blowingly gifted. You know, I'm not, and I don't just mean in churches, I mean in general, the wisdom, and I love them. Some of them, are just, some of them just straight cool with me. They run the streets, and they cool. You know what I mean? They realize, hey, you know, this is my circumstances. I'm doing what I got to do, and I respect it. I don't get into it, don't get involved, I don't come at them, but I understand. Because young people need, old, some of the older folk is, is, is ignorant, too. Some of them don't act, that they act a certain way towards younger people, and that's not good. You know, you, disres you can't be disrespectful to young people because they need, some of them need you. They want to hear you. They want your help. But they realize you close the door in their face a lot. So, you know, let's get the two-way street going, you know. That's how you build up again, you know. You can't cut off years of time, you know, because then there'll be a big gap. And the, and the enemy already caused the gap of historical things and accounts and records that we cannot find or track. That's why everybody's at each other. Let's continue. Ye all of you be subject one to another. See that? Be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. Because you got to be humble. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. You've heard, heard that before. But most high, he's going to resist the proud. And the Bible says the proud and the haughty spirit comes before a fall. You see somebody bragging on oh, this. Uh, well, that's y'all. I ain't know that stuff don't happen to me. Because I'm the... All right. A prideful and haughty spirit going to come before a fall. Then you have that great fall. Then you're going to need all them people that you shunned away. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yah, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself, even in the midst of the vex. I'm telling you, I was sore, vexed, like King David said. I was sore and vexed. And the enemy just like, ah, I'm going to get you. Go after him. Everybody get him, get him, get him. I'm like, imagine, imagine, I don't want to say any names, but just imagine you're the greatest quarterback or something of all time. If he threw, which he has, threw an interception, even though he's all that, one time, and they said, get rid of him. He would have never took you to the four or five, six Super Bowls. Some things are a part of life. Don't we all wish crime would end, all this murder and killing? But this description in Revelations talks about the red horse, and it would be a lot of that, and the gray horse. But don't, you, don't we wish that? Some things are part of this, this, this life. And you can see people, they're saying, listen, we're going to try to stop the crime and all. They, they can only do the best they can with the, the, the manpower they got. But sometimes when people want to, you know, somebody may be the, like I said in part one, you might be the awesomest uh, housekeeper ever. You know, one dust bunny, one little ball of dust they missed. And it was in an executive office or something. Get rid of them. Let's go after them. Take everything from them. What? Some things are a part of, don't you make, don't, don't we all fall short of the glory of God? And that's how you can tell them sometimes the people that are like that are psychotic. You know, there's a lot of people, I'm telling you, they can have big time degrees and all that kind of stuff and move in different places and can have behavioral health issues. Everybody's dealing with, everybody deals with, deals with something, you know, including myself. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But you can tell because your adversary will go straight for the juggler, straight for, boom, you know what I mean? Oh, he pitched the shutout, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, six games and game seven, he, uh, uh, winning extra innings, he threw it. Uh-oh, home run. They lost. Get rid of him next season. Well, he just won two World Series for you, you know, the two years prior. Imagine they got rid of Jordan every time he missed a free throw. Sometimes things happen because it's a part of, the game, when it's in the game sense, game, you know, in sports, that's a game. It's entertainment, but they do get paid, you know. So it's still their job, you know. So things happen in life. If you're married to somebody and they drop the ball, it don't mean divorce right away. Some things happen. And you can, I'm not saying somebody drop the ball and, and, and cheat on you or something like that. But I'm just saying some things in life, all, all different, we can go on every topic and subject. People sometimes want to go straight, cut the lifeline, cut the juggler, pull the plug on them, flatline them, and you forget who got you there. Whoever, who got you to the Super Bowl? 
before you was coaching? Who took? Who was taking the team to the to the Super Bowl every uh, every other year or the playoffs or the NBA championship or the or the pennant or the or Stanley Cup or whatever? I'm just using sports as an example. If they always went right after the star player for one little interception or a fumble, there was running back. He fumbled. He had 2,000 yards. He's only one of a handful of running backs with that. And 27 touchdowns running. He was a Heisman Trophy winner in college. He was a high school All-American blue chip and everything. He won two Super Bowls with this team here. And then this team, he winds up. He fumbled in the Super Bowl. I can't believe. Get rid of him. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. That's, this, this life is like that. You can have 58 knockouts. You know, 58 wins and 47 knockouts and one loss. If you lose to one little thing, get rid of him. I remember a big famous fighter, you know, he got caught slipping, bam, get rid You know, they just, they just hated him, you know, and that's the way the society is. And if you got wisdom, you know, not to always get rid of, not, don't get rid of folk like that because those folk brought you through. They carried it for you, for the love for you. They realized you had a had a, a, a weight to carry, and then you didn't realize they was carrying, they was helping you, you know, the best they can. Some things slide through the cracks. Some things are sand in the hand. But like that footprint poem, the, the Messiah, Christ, is carrying, you know. So you can't always shoot down every situation, you know. You look, like I said, you can look at marriages. You can look at friendships. You can look at in all different facets, you can't always go and go for the juggler on somebody, especially when the situation entails that these things happen. Fumbles happen in, in football. Do they or do they not? In the NBA, free throws are missed sometimes, right? They don't all go in, right? Three pointers are missed. Basic shot layups are missed. Dunks are missed. Can I get an amen? The, the dude that's bat 504 at the plate, he strikes out sometimes doesn't he? The guy that pitches a, a 081, you know, high ER, I mean, low ERA, right? Every now and then somebody knock that ball right out of his head, out the park. So some things are part of it, but you can tell when you're dealing with somebody that's psychotic, because the first thing, get them, get them, you know, they're just thrown on. I'm not talking about fans, but y'all know what I'm talking about. In daily life, you got people like that. And the first thing is, and then when it's, when they realize, you know, you don't, you don't came at a profit. But well, the scriptures say, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. And then now you're in the wrath of the Most High. You know, because what's, because what's happening in a lot of these cases, I'm going to round it off and keep going, is the person never liked you from the beginning. Even from of old, they tried to get you, tried to snatch everything out of you and, and, and leave you for dead. And they see you still surviving by the grace, by that same grace. And so now your adversary is angry and they're on assignment from Satan. Now you don't believe this, because I know when I was at a, when I was at, at that place of growth in the scriptures. But anybody that's a believer, you have an assignment that's after your soul, and your gifts, and your talents, and your anointing. That Satan will send them. That's a part of this life. Christ had Judas. Anyway, let's continue. And anybody with sense, when you if you say, no, that person's a decent dude or a decent uh, lady or whatever, and you and you see the, per the people come to you, no, get them, get them, get them, get them, you should be able to weigh it and say, nah, something ain't right here. Something's wrong with that person that's trying to make me make a decision. You know what I'm saying? You can tell. Or if you're that person being persecuted and your adversary is saying, trust me, like the snake, I won't bite you. Carry me this, you know, and you done carried them. A snake is always a snake. I'm from the old school. And that's why some young people, you need to listen to some of those old schoolers and that stuff and get some of that wisdom because you're going to need it. Now, y'all got wisdom that we need, too. We need your help, too. But did we just read? All of you be subject one to another. Let's continue. Humble yourselves, right? Under the mighty hand of Yah that he may exalt you in due time. You will be exalted in due time, but you got to humble yourself and exalt him in the meantime. That's a word. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. I'm telling you, I had to put everything. You know, because I'm going to lean on the Lord. I had to lay on him. Because the spirit in me, I was like, mm -mm. 
I don't even want to talk about it. But you know what? I'm well. That's what warfare. I had to go pray in, in warfare, cause I tell you, mm, them devils on assignment for me. Well, I want. I, I can't even tell you. I'm not at that kind of liberty. You know, <laughs> the spirit is liberty, right? But I don't even want to say those things, cause those things are between the conversations. You know, of my prayers about that, cause I, I those things, some of them things. You know, when Christ was praying, he was praying to like like blood in Gethsemane, you know. Sweat was like blood, you know. Because folk do stuff and they come right at your, you, you know. And here you're supporting them. You're their supporting gas. And they can't reason and say, okay, the, a demon got in and did this or that. And then somebody there was not paying, not doing their thing. But no, get you because I've hated you from of old, you know, and you can feel it. And I've had dreams about some of my adversaries. Dreams. The Most High will show me in the dreams. This one's a witch. This one's a warlock. This one hates your guts. These are on assignment. One of the dreams, the person had teeth like a bat. You know? Like a bat. I could go in deep, but I don't even want to say. You know? I don't want to go too. So for y'all that deal with those things, you know? And you get to a place to interpret dreams. I can interpret dreams and things. But anyway... Let's go back to the scriptures. It's not easy. Because you're going to always come to, under attack for the word. Always. Yeah. Ooh, that's going to take me to a place. and I don't. That's why we at the next verse. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And y'all heard that before. Be sober. You're running around, let me get a 211, uh, let me get a Bud Ice, uh, let me get a, you know, this, you know, let me get a Cigarello, you know what I mean, I'm going to roll up one. Because this stuff going on these last days, pandemic stuff, tripping on you, yo, man, I just sometimes need to talk one. <sighs> you know what I mean, and just analyze life, you know what I mean, after I take a cup, you know, sometimes you got to get, put all those, those agents away and those adjutants that are, that are just, Things that are just going to lead you right, right further into sin, further into um, situations. My grandmother used to say, <laughs> as my mother would say to her, I miss my mom, but my grandmother, they would, they used to, they used to, have, they used to say this, if you in a hole, stop digging. You ain't going to never get out, you know, so in other words, you find yourself in a trap or something, you just still, I'm going to find my way out. You ain't going to find your way out you digging deeper and deeper, get up, come up out of it. But the Bible says, come ye out of it. Touch not the unclean thing, and then I'll hear you, and I'll receive you. Be vigilant. There's suffering in this walk. But you got to be vigilant. You got to be diligent, too. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You got to be talking to him. And if those that are in the truth, you got to be talking to one another. You know what I mean? Do well to communicate, the scriptures say. Ooh. I feel the ooh, I feel I feel the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, the whole time I was on, I was praising anyway, because I know praise is a weapon. I was praising anyway. Come what may, I'm still gonna praise the Most High, because praise is a weapon and it confuses the enemy, confuses them. You're praising like the three Hebrew boys. You ever in there praising and you in the oven? They're frying you to death and you in there. And, I, and then he said, I seen a fourth one in there, look like an angel. You keep on us in the... Oh, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me keep reading. Because these adversaries, you know. <clears throat> Let's go. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your adversary, your adversary, like I said, we all have one on assignment. Some of you don't even know. You know, sleeping with the enemy. Let's continue. That's for somebody that might wake up and say, Yikes, I done got a devil. But it's as a roaring lion. He ain't the lion of Judah. As a roaring lion. The roaring. Why do the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? A vain thing. A meaningless thing. But the heathen gonna rage. Some of y'all don't know who the heathen is. You still think it's Fred Sanford. Because Esther's walking around saying, you old heathen. Let's continue. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And that's the sore vex. Because I can feel like he's trying to devour me. And it's going all the way back to when you did it years ago. Here I love you. I'm trying to do my best. But I'm going to devour you. That's the way it is. 
the way Judas was. Betrayed the Messiah, came up and kissed him and all that stuff. 30 pieces of silver. Then his stupid self had to go and hang his dumb self, thinking he's just at the ordinary man. Just the son of the Most High, the Hamashiach. Mm, mm, mm. Trying to take down the power. Even Satan tried to make Christ kill himself. He said, throw thyself off this, off this mountain. For it is written, he quoting scripture, Satan. For it is written, the angels will take charge of thee, lest ye dash thy foot against a stone. Satan quoting scriptures to the Messiah. Trying to make him, you wonder where these spirits come from. The demon in the caves cutting itself with rocks, crying in the, at night in the tombs. Then you, then you hear about teenagers cutting themselves. You think this stuff ain't scripted? These are spirits, demons on this world and this planet. You know? And you got Satan. And you got people that like Satan. But oh, you waiting for the ground to open up and some little red people walking around with pitchforks when they're walking around you every day. And all shapes, sizes, and colors. You got demonic people that need to be delivered. Some people want to keep them demons. Or as one of the bishops used to say, they're friends. Keep the demons running. Then they want to reach out for what? Get delivered. Don't bring it this way. Because what the scriptures say, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Resist. And the Bible another scripture say, resist the devil and he shall so flee. And that's what you got to do. Stand up. Resist steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We are, we're, we're suffering the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. So what did the body of Christ take? All that whipping all night long? We're the body. You know, that's why we need each other. The eyes can't say I don't need the hand. The arm can't say I don't need the leg. The hearing can't say it's our all functioning body. And he's the Godhead bodily. Thus said the scriptures. You know what I mean? That's why we got to trust the word and not the adversary. Nor his rage and all his stuff trying to cut off your very... Um, livelihood, your life, you know, you cut your life, your anointing, your gift. Your, he just wants every. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. But you got to know your brothers are going through this, and sisters. But the grace, mm, but the God of all grace, woo, amazing grace, of all grace, who have called us unto this eternal glory. That's so we're called into His eternal glory. You know. By the Hamashiach, by Christ Jesus, you know. By Yahweh, you know, by Hamashiach, Yahweh. After that, you have suffered a while. So you're going to suffer. You know, somebody once told me years ago, and I love this person. They were still good people. So they, they was a blessing to me. But I knew they wasn't grounded in the scriptures. They said, I would like to, you know, but I just hear so much about being persecuted. And I don't want to deal with the persecution. And I realized they didn't. And they, they're blessed. They're blessed just for being a blessing. But I realized they didn't, but they didn't really, no one took them through what the persecution and these things that you do have to go through, you know. So when you turn on the TV and God just bless you, he just favored me. I got a plane with my name on it. I got two Bentleys, a Maybach. I live in a castle. I'm preaching in California tomorrow, in New York and France in a, in a couple of weeks. And, and all this kind of, you know, stuff. Did you see Christ saying all that? And I'm not saying you can't have things because even Paul talked about that. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, some people, you could just see, it's like the scriptures, filthy lucre. But anyway, let's continue. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. So he's going he's gonna to make you, not where you just so, you know, but he's going to bring you back. He's going to refresh your spirit and establish you and strengthen you and settle you. Somebody say amen. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He gets the glory. He gets the glory. All right now to the king eternally, mortal, invisible, and the only wise. Yahweh be honor, glory forever and ever. So be it. Shalom. Shalom. Yahweh is great. Yahushua, Yahshua, Yahuwah, he is great. All right. Stay encouraged. Don't trust your adversary. Stand up in faith and let them know. My God is greater. Right. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 
no matter what they do. Yeah, you're going to suffer some time, but they're going to pay for it. You'll read in these scriptures, the Most High has wiped out families for people coming against, you know, his uh, ordained prophets. Shalom, be strong, be blessed.